Are you one of those music teachers who is always looking online for instruments on Facebook Marketplace? Aren't you always excited when you find a really great deal or even a free instrument someone's just trying to give away? Would you take a free instrument? if it was cursed. Hi, my name is Casey Dreamus. I'm a music educator and composer. And on this channel, we talk about things that help your music program thrive. I saw the strangest post titled free cursed bass guitar. It looked like the bass guitar was fine. All the description said was previously owned by self-proclaimed Nazi. Yikes, man, that's kind of freaky. But of course this intrigued me. I, I was just astounded by this post. So I messaged the person right away. I went there the next day and I got a little more information on this story. The gal who was giving it away, she used to be in a punk band. And this punk band, they were very big into like anarchy, going against the government, all that stuff. She was dating this guy in the band. He would read these books by these guys who were very into anarchy and all these different things. But these people were also big white supremacists. He would read these books and slowly racism and negativity towards certain people, certain types of ethnicities sort of was bleeding into this person's mind. She moved away and he gave her this base to, to use and when she moved away, she found out a couple years later that he was going around telling people that he was a Nazi and all this weird stuff. So technically, he didn't call himself a Nazi when he owned the bass or when he played the bass, but it's still kind of a weird story. I took this bass for my wife's school and I wanted to fix it up and I wanted to I wanted to modify it so that in a way it's just kind of has been cleansed of the past, I guess you could say. I wanted to repaint it, but also the pit guard had been painted with like really cruddy paint and not done well. I am not great with electronics. The times I have pulled everything out and like cut wires and then soldered them back together, I've had really bad luck. So I just thought maybe I can do this whole thing without actually taking anything out of the base and just leaving it in there and just taping it in there real tight. One of the challenging things is that there's these kind of nuts that are on the headstock of the base and those are hard to get out and what i actually had to do is i had this this old like bass drum foot thing that's like just a, a dowel rod with a little rubber foot on the end and that rubber foot fit like perfectly sitting in between there and i just took a hammer and gently tapped it out and i popped out all of those the brand of the bass was ariana which i don't have a problem with it seems to be a decent brand I can't find a lot about it, but it seems like online they're being sold used for like $300 or so. But it is weird to me that someone who considers themselves a Nazi would get a base with the brand name as close to Aryan as you possibly can. I mean, I might just be reading too much into that, but like, why didn't he just pick Fender or Squire or Epiphone or something that has nothing to do with, uh, you know, racism, you know? And Ariana, I do not want to get in trouble from you. I am not calling you racist. I'm just saying it's not spelled the same. I'm just saying it's like, it's a little weird. It's coincidental, you know? I had an idea to cut off the pit guard. I like things that look unique and distinguished. I also thought that 
if there was an instance where the band was playing at like a city festival where there's other groups playing, no one has a bass that looks like that. On the spots that wouldn't be covered by a pit guard anymore, I used wood filler to put in those holes, let that sit overnight, and then I sanded over it the next day. I painted the hell out of this thing. I usually put three or four coats of paint on. I put seven, and then I put four coats of clear coat on there. I wanted this base to just be indestructible. Hopefully it'll withstand abuse for a really, really long time. Putting this thing all back together, I have to say it's so satisfying to rip off that painter's tape and just to see those lines and to see where everything is. Oh, it feels so good. Hammering in the nuts on the headstock, oh man, that that was a lot more work than I wanted it to be. It wasn't that difficult, it was just the fact that you have to hit it so hard to get those back in that I ended up chipping a little bit of paint off of the headstock and it just sucks that you spent all that time doing that and you already damaged it. It's not too noticeable once all the strings are on there, but there was a little damage unfortunately the strings that were on the base are really old and nasty but i put them back on just so i could do a play test on it and here's the results Overall, I have to say I'm really happy with it. I think it looks kind of cool and unique. It looks a little distinguished from other schools, what they would have. And it also is painted the school color. It matches all the other things I've made for the school so far. So it's really easy. It all looks uniformed. Since this base was completely free, there's a few things I would like to put some upgrades into. First of all, new strings, because those strings are just disgusting. There's actually strings out there that are very smooth. I have them on my personal base. That would be really great for a middle school. It doesn't hurt as much to push down on. The next part go hand in hand. I want to buy a good guitar strap. If you have kids using it a lot over time, that strap is going to get a lot of abuse and eventually rip. I really recommend this product, even though there are guitar players who for some reason diss it like it's a stupid thing to have on your guitar. To me, it saves a lot of heartache when a kid accidentally drops the bass because it slipped out of the guitar strap and they're called strap locks. I really recommend these to anybody. Make sure that your equipment is not going to get abused. Do everything you can and that strap lock is going to save you a lot of stress. It's also going to be good for the kids because if the kid's playing and halfway through a song their strap gives out and it drops down then they're going to be all flustered. They're going to have a hard time getting back into the song. Those upgrades would cost about $60. I think that's a pretty good deal considering the bass itself was completely free. If you guys like this sort of content, talking about instruments and how to fix them up and stuff like that, please let me know. I really like to hear about it. And as always, I appreciate you sharing this with other educators. You don't have to have $20,000 budgets per year. You don't have to have all the stuff. You can do a lot with a very small budget and get your band moving in a positive direction. Have a great one. Bye.